Good afternoon to everyone. We are aware that uh, many of you are listening to our uh, program, worship program this afternoon. And uh, we thank the Lord. We thank also uh, Alice and Robert who are coming to take my message. We also have Nanang who prepared the background of our meeting, of our message, and we thank them all. And uh, we, we pray the Lord that uh, as long as we are not up allowed to have some meetings in the community center where we usually have our services, we will try our best through God's help that to have this uh, worship in our homes. So let us be praying for it that uh, in spite of uh, the fact that we are not actually doing our meeting, our assembly, our gathering, we have the real spirit of worship. Uh, first of all, I would like to read the scripture reading upon which our message is uh, based this Sunday, it is Luke chapter 2, verses 39 to 46. And this is what it says. Luke 2, 39 to 46. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but your will be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in, an angu in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer, he went back to his disciples. He found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. May God help us to listen to his word. Let us pray. Our Father God, we believe that you are with every one of us wherever we are, and your Holy Spirit is speaking to us through this worship on the air. We pray that you would speak to us. We pray that wherever we are, we would experience your presence. You are with us. And this hour that uh, we are joining this uh, worship, may we feel your presence. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The part of the scripture that was read to us was that episode in the life of Christ just before he was arrested by the Romans and by some leaders of the temple. You may remember that uh, Jesus started his ministry by isolating himself in the wilderness to pray for 40 days. And uh, you may ask, what was he praying for? Uh, well, he must have gone there to consult with his father on how he's going to carry on his ministry because he was just about to start his ministry and uh, that time Satan also came to tempt him and he also had his suggestion on how Jesus should carry his uh, ministry but Jesus didn't uh, bow to any of the suggestion of Satan. Now he is about to end his ministry 
And again, as he started his ministry with prayer for 40 days and 40 nights, he is at the Garden of Gethsemane praying, praying so passionately, fervently. And uh, his prayers at least has two parts, has two elements, has two components. And what are they? We read that in verse 42, which says, this was his prayer, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. That's the first petition. Take this cup from me. And then, yet not my will, but you will be done. And let us try to think on these two contents of his prayer. This should be very important and significant to, to Jesus and also to the disciples and to all of us. Because this was his prayer as he prepared for the cross. First, is he said, take this cup from me. You, you, you wonder, we wonder what that cup was, what was represented in that cup. Of course, that cup was the cross. He was praying that if possible, God should give him the chance to escape or to avoid that cr the cross. But the question is, why was he reluctant to take the cross, to face the cross? Why was he reluctant? Why did he hesitate? to go to the cross? Was it because he was scared by what was going to happen? Of course we know that Jesus wanted what was going to happen because he had, he has even told this to the disciples many times. I'm going to Jerusalem and they shall arrest me and they shall torture me, they shall nail me to the cross and I shall die. But on the third day I shall rise again. He was not ignorant of what was going to happen. But was he afraid because of the, of the sufferings that will be inflict, inflicted upon him? The Bible will help us to answer that question. If Jesus hesitated to go to the, the cross because he was scared. In Mark chapter 10, Verse 32, we read, They were on their way up to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way. And the disciples were astonished while those who follow were afraid. Now they were, the disciples and Jesus were going on their, to the, Jerusalem. They were on their way to Jerusalem. But they noticed, they sensed that Jesus was in a hurry in his walking it's like uh, he was he could not wait until he could be in jerusalem and we are even told here that the disciples were astonished why why is he ru almost running to go to jerusalem and those who were following him were, were even a little bit scared they were afraid because that was something extraordinary to them so here there was no fear at all on the part of jesus there was no fear at all he was not at all afraid to go to jerusalem and even to the cross he was not afraid so we ask why why was he uh, seemed to be reluctant why was he praying father take this cup from me why was he praying Father, I would not want to go to Jerusalem. Why? I would not want to go to the cross. Why? Somebody said, as a matter of fact, a professor of ours in seminary, professor in psychology, said that the most painful trauma that would come to a person is 
the experience of rejection. If you are rejected, that would be the most and heavier, uh, most painful and heavy, heaviest trauma that would come to you, the experience of rejection. And from the beginning, Jesus sends the people are rejecting him. In John 1, 11, we read, He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Uh, he was the, uh, he is, Jesus is the creator of the world. As we read in the New Testament and in John, for example, Jesus was responsible in creating all. In, in other words, G God used him to create the world. He was the agency of creation. And, uh, and yet, his own people, Adam and Eve, from Adam and Eve up to the Jewish people, he felt he was rejected. So, this is the reason why he was unwilling to go to the cross. Because the, the cross is a symbol of his rejection. He is rejected. What are the ways in which we reject him? Uh, the cross symbolizes the people from uh, the Jewish leaders and even the Roman authorities. The cross was lifted up because they rejected Jesus. And even us, we also helped in the raising up of the cross. That's why we sing, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Yes, we are all there. We were all there. When do we reject Jesus? We reject Jesus when we sin. Every time we sin, we reject Jesus. We reject God. Adam and Eve rejected God when they violated God's command to them not to eat the fruit of the forbidden tree. Why? God told them that they, they were not supposed to touch that. And yet when Satan came to them, they forgot all that God has told them. At the a Eve took the fruit first and then after giving it to after eating the fruit he also shared she also shared Adam and so God went to them because he wanted to fellowship with them but now that they have taken and eaten the fruit of the forbidden tree they were running away from God they cannot fellowship with him, him anymore they rejected him they sinned when we violate God's commandment, we do not only reject the commandment, his words. We do not only neglect his words. We reject God, the one who gave those commandments. So every, every time we sin, in Hebrews, we are told, that whenever we sin, we crucify him again. So all of us, we were not actually there when Jesus was crucified, but even now, every time we commit sin, we violate his will. We are participating in the crucifixion of Jesus. What, how else do we reject him? We reject him when we fail to do our responsibilities. God has given us responsibilities. You know, 
when we are called by the gospel to follow Jesus, to believe in God, we are not only forgiven to go to heaven when we die, we are going to live here. If you, we, we are still given the chance to live here, when we believe in God, when we follow him, he gives us responsibilities. He gives us responsibilities. And the accepting and fulfilling those responsibilities is also accepting the God who gives us the responsibilities. But when we don't do, we fail to do those responsibilities, we are rejecting the one who gave those responsibilities. We have the parable of the talents. We all know the par 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 parable of the talents. One, there is a king who was preparing to go to a to a tour and he called three of his disciples because he was going to give them some responsibilities, some trust. He gave uh, let us say he gave five hundred dollars to one. He gave two dollars, two hundred dollars to another one, and then to the last one he gave one hundred dollars. And uh, of course, this uh, this uh, these servants knew what they were going to do with those, and we have the story that uh, the one was given $500, used that $500 in business and produced another $500. And the same is true with the one who received $200. He used that and produced another $200. But how about the one who received $100? We are told that he went to keep, hide the $100 that he received. He did not use it. And when the, server, the uh, master came back, each one of them gave an account of what they did with the, their, their, the, dollar, the money that, was, that were, were given to them. And then he came, uh, the, the, the two first servants told them that they used the money that their king uh, gave it to them and they have doubled the amount of the money so they were they were submitting that to the king and the king was so happy he was he promised to them some rewards and then when he came to the last one this is what the last servant said Uh, this, the, 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 last, this, the last servant said, I know, I knew your ugali. Alam ko ang ugali mo. I knew that you were going to expect me to use that and then give you some interest, give you a report of what I did with those. I know that you would exact some money from us which you did not earn, which you did not make. And so I, I was afraid and I hid. And you know what the, the, the master said? This is the master said. And let us watch it. You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I, ha I harvest where I have not sown. You knew that I would gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have known what to do. You should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. Here, uh, the, the, you, we cannot charge the servant that he did not know what to do. He knew, and he knew what to expect from the master. But the, the problem with him is that he did not act according to what he knew. He did not act according to his knowledge. He was not ignorant on what he should do. He knew, but he did not act. That was his mistake. So, if we read this story, this uh, servant 
was judged, was punished for what he knew he should do, but he did not do. Failure. Now, the, our question was, when, what are the ways we reject God? When he has given us responsibilities, but we do not fulfill it. And I want us to emphasize that everyone who believes in God has something to do. What is our responsibility? In general, we can say that every believer, every one of us as believers, as followers of God, we have a very important responsibility. What is that? We are to promote the work of his kingdom. The greatest project of God in this world is to establish back his kingdom which was lost through the sin of Adam and Eve and which is lost, continue to be lost by our disobedience to God. That is our big responsibility. God has a great project in this world. It is to restore his kingdom. And you and I has a part in the restoration of that kingdom. He uses us as his fellow workmen, co-workers with God, to establish back that kingdom. We are his instruments. And all of us followers of God were given talents, were given opportunities, were given blessings. And those blessings that he has given to us, we are to enjoy them. We are to enjoy them. But the greatest way we could enjoy those blessings that he has given each one of us is to use those blessings to push the work of the kingdom. That's the greatest joy we can have, to be co-workers with him in advancing his kingdom. So, let us uh, go to the second part of the prayer. The prayer is, not my will, but your will be done. Of course, he just knew that he, he was not to run away from the cross. He has to embrace it. He knew it was painful. But when you know, even if something is painful, even if in doing the will of God, you have to deny yourself, you have to bear a cross. If it is his will, you must be willing to embrace that responsibility, that cross. So he said, not my will, but your will be done. In spite of the pain, the suffering that that cross would bring on me, help me to do your, your will. That was Jesus' final prayer. It is a complete surrender to him. When Jesus prayed that, not my will, but your will. He was demonstrating and teaching us on the secret of receiving the answers of our prayer. We may ask, why is it that when I pray for something, I don't receive it? There, maybe there are different causes why you don't receive it. Maybe you did not do your part. You were lazy. We, we want that people would come and say, Lord, bring people to our church if we are not doing our responsibilities nothing may be done we don't receive the answer of our prayers maybe one reason why we don't receive our the answer of our prayers we are not doing our responsibilities but there is another one another very important prayer why we do not receive the answer of our prayer it is that our prayers are not in accordance with the will of god uh, John in his let in this letter the, the first, second, third John at the back of our New Testament give, give us the reason or the secret of the answering or the granting of ours. What must how must we pray in order that all our prayers may be granted? And this is what it says. 
This is the confidence we have in approaching God. Now you'll say to this, that if we ask anything according to His will, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. He hears us. How can we be sure that our prayers are granted? How? That our prayers are in accordance to the will of God. So, prayer requires that we must know God's will. Because we, can, we cannot pray for God's will if we do not know His will. We have to know. How do we know His will? Let us read our Bibles. Let us pray to Him. We, we let us ask Him. How am I going to do this, God? We will ask His guidance because we cannot really go have a good prayer without the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So we must know His will. And as I, we said, His will is to participate in the pushing of his kingdom in whatever we do. Don't ever say that the work of the, the kingdom of God belongs to the pastor or to the deaconess or to the chairman of the official board. No. The work of the kingdom is for all of us. Thy kingdom, thy will be done. See, when we pray, the second petition is Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That is the that is the ultimate will of God. Everything that we must do must relate to the kingdom of God. Do I act, do I relate, do I work? Because I want the spirit of God to rule. Is that our ultimate prayer? So, Jesus prayed. And let us not wait until we are also facing sufferings or temptations or trials to pray. We must pray every time. If you are watching the TV, there is a doctor which announced every now and then we need, you need test, test, test. He repeats that over and over. So I want to conclude and say, let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. In everything we pray, we commit to God everything that we do. Our whole life, we must commit to him in prayer. Thank you.